Hi everyone, I have a fun little app to test. Right behind me you see this little input box where you can enter any zip code. And imagine you are writing some kind of delivery program. And you deliver to some zip codes but not to others. So for example, you don't deliver to 9999. Uh, you don't deliver to you know, 1111. But if you enter 90210, then it's supported. So imagine I give you a list of zip codes and I ask you to verify that it delivers to certain zip codes but not others. So how would you check that? So we have a list of zip codes to check. So why don't we, for each zip, right, take it and, you know, what do we have to do as a user? We have to enter it in the input box. Then we have to make sure that it shows either thumbs down or a check mark. And then store the zip code either in the list of supported zip codes or unsupported zip codes. So I'll say delivers. So this will be the ones from this list that the app delivers and the list of zip codes that we don't delivered. Okay, so we're going to get the zip and we need to type the zip code we are working with followed by enter. And right now, notice it just types it very quickly, the app starts checking, right? But we don't wait for the check to finish. So we have to make sure that it actually gives us the status. So the status right here at the, the end has an ID supported. Okay, so the element is always there, but just the text changes. So we're gonna use invoke tags from that element. And notice how initially it shows like three dots. So what we want to do, we say, okay, this tag should be one of, and what do we have as a valid string? Check of thumbs down. And now our test, notice, waits for the status to be computed and doesn't proceed while the application is deciding. Great. So what do we do next? We get this text, right, supported from the element. It will be one of those two. And if uh, supported is the check mark, right, then we'll add the zip code to delivers. Otherwise, we add it to the list of unsupported zip codes. Okay, and, and just for fun, let's wait one second after each zip code, just so we can see how it's checking, waiting, and then going to the next one. All right, so once it's done iterating over all zip codes, what happens next? Well, we need to confirm the list of zip codes it delivers to. The cool thing is that the list is available right away. It's just it gets filled with items. So we can wrap delivers and use should zip equal and then uh, the list of values that the application support. And the cool thing is that by wrapping it, we ensure that we will run the assertion only after all previous commands finish. So it will run only after that array gets the element. Now, I already know that out of this list, only 90210 and 8010 are supported. So let's verify that. Perfect. Notice that the two arrays are correct. What about unsupported ones? Well, the cool thing that we could do, we could take all our zips and subtract the one that application delivers to, and then that would be the expected zip codes that should be invalid. Now, we want to actually use these delivers after it gets filled, so we cannot just use it right away. We can only say, okay, then, right? So this then callback runs after the wrap, which means that this array already has been filled, only now it has values, and we can say, you know, unsupported, and we can use the low dash difference between all zips and delivers, right? These are the correct zip codes that we know are already there, okay? So we remove them from all zips, invalid, zip equal, and support it. So we kind of use the same approach where we say, okay, grab the array of invalid zip codes, it should be filled by now, and compare to what we just computed, Okay, 555, 0, 2, 1, 2, 3 are not supported. 
because we already inside that damn callback, we don't have to retry, everything is always there. We can even expect invalid to give equal and support it. It works exactly the same way, right? Because the values are always there and we can just synchronously check the assertion. Okay, works the same way. So this is kind of a uh, you know, fun program. We iterate all over the data. We use application, we wait for application using retries to actually stop computing. Then we grab that computational value, fill the array, use scirab that array, and shoot deep equal, which retries and runs only after array has been filled. And then we even compute the other expected value from the difference of arrays. 